The St. Petersburg Paradox. We will start our investigation of risk preferences by looking at the St. Peter's Paradox. The St. Peter's Paradox was introduced by Bernoulli. His story, he was talking about a gamble in a made-up St. Petersburg casino. Here we will talk about a modified version of the St. Petersburg Paradox. The setting is as follows. You get $100 and you can either keep it or flip a fair coin. Each time head appears, you gain 50%. So if you throw the coin once, head appears, you will end up with 150 euros, the dollars. Each time tail appears, you lose 40% of your money. So if you throw the coin, once tail appears, you will end up with $60. Now think of the following questions. Would you rather take the 100 Euro dollars or flip the coin once? Would you rather take the $100 or flip the coin twice? So in this case, you commit yourself to flip the coin twice, all your money from which is left over after the first coin toss is reinvested? Would you rather take the $100 or flip the coin 10 times? And finally, suppose you could have the chance of either taking the $100 or commit to flip the coin infinitely often. What would you, what would you do? On the next slides, we will go through these questions and see what, what theory tells us about it. Let's start with question one. So you have the chance, either you take $100 or you invest the $100 and throw the coin once. If you throw the coin once, two things might happen, either head shows or and you will end up with $150 or tail shows off and you will end up with only $60 left. So how can you be guided in, in this decision? Well, what you typically do is you calculate the expected value. So 50% chance of $150 plus 50% chance of ending up with $60, which makes on average a profit or a payoff of $105, which is larger than $100. So many people uh, would take the, uh, the gamble and uh, on average or in expectation, this investment is, is paying off. Now let's proceed to the second question. So here you have the chance of either taking the $100 or flipping the coin twice. Each time you flip the coin, your payoff grows by an expected 5%. So if you throw the coin twice, your expected value, your expected uh, amount of the expected amount of money you have is given by $110.25, which again is greater than $100. However, you might not only care about the expected value, but you might also want to look at the distribution of possible payoffs. And this distribution is somehow captured in the median value. But let us first look at the right-hand side of the slide. There I depicted a tree that, that shows you the, the possible outcome. So let's start at the top. You start with $100 and invest it. 
with 50% probability, you will end up after the first coin toss with $150. Then throwing the uh, coin again, you can either gain another 50%, which might, implies that you end up with $225, or you will lose the 40% and end up with only $90. On the other hand, if the first coin toss resulted in uh, tails showing up, then you will have $60 left after the first coin toss. And investing the $60 implies that you either end up with $90, which is a case if heads shows up in the second coin toss, or you will lose another 40% resulting in a payoff of only $36. So what you can see here is that in 25% of the cases, you end up with $225, which is greater than the $100 you invested. However, with 50% chance, you end up with $90, which is less than $100. And with 25% probability, you end up with $36, which is also smaller than the invested $100. So even though the expected value of the investment is positive, it's greater than $100, in three out of four cases, you end up with less than the invested amount. So you can see here, there's a trade-off with You, the, the expected uh, profit, the expected return of investment is positive. However, in many cases, you end up with less money than, than you invested. So this is obviously a trade. -off. However, if you assume that the uh, participant is risk neutral, uh, the participant should definitely invest into uh, the gamble. Let's proceed to the third question. Would you rather take the $100 or flip the coin 10 times? We, we can do the same calculation as before. Now uh, take into account that we do not only toss the coin twice, but 10 times. And each time we toss the coin, the expected value grows by 5%. This implies that the um, expected value of the investment is $162.89. But again, we can look at the median value. So the value which 50% of the people get less than, or exactly, like, exactly the amount or less than the amount. And what you can see here is, heads and tail is equally likely. So in 50% chance, you will get an increase by 50%. And in 50% of the cases, you will uh, lose 40% each time you throw. So this means if you throw the or toss the coin very often, it's likely that you will get in around half the cases you will get heads and in half the cases you will get tails. So each time you, whenever you throw the coin twice, you will on average get a return of minus 10%. So each time you throw the coin twice, the median value of your investment goes down by 10%. This means throwing the coin 10 times results in median value of just $59.05. And on the right-hand side, I depicted the, uh, I, I ran a simulation and I depicted the um, distribution of payoffs. So on the very right end of the spectrum, you see the case where you throw the coin 10 times and each time you throw the coin, um, heads shows up. In this case, your payment 
is close to 5,770 euro uh, dollars. On the other hand, if each of the 10 coin throws, coin tosses uh, shows tails, you end up with only 60 cents. The orange bar depicts your initial, initial investment, so the $100 you started with. And what you can see here that the majority of the outcomes are left to this investment. So in the majority of the cases, you will earn less than you invested. So here the observation, on average you win, but you lose money in more than 62% of the cases. Let's take it to the extreme and look at uh, question four. Question four, we do exactly the same calculations as before. And looking at the expected value, what you can see is, of course, each time you toss a coin, on average, you earn 5%. So if you have 5% growth rate forever, you will end up infinitely rich. That is, you should be willing to pay an infinite amount, infinite amount of money for having the chance of playing this game. And this is what the original uh, Bernoulli paradox, the uh, St. Petersburg paradox was about. But now let us also look at the median value. As before, each time you throw the coin twice, you lose 10% which means if you have a minus 10% growth rate forever, you will end up with zero after infinitely many uh, tosses. And the idea to, uh, the, I, I try to depict it on the, on the right-hand side, what you on the right-hand side see is basically each layer of this uh, graph shows you one coin toss. And if you add more layers and layers and layers and layers, you will get a distribution where most of the real realizations are close to, uh, to the middle, to the zero. This means you have as many heads as tails. And if you have as many tails as um, heads, you will end up with um, a, a decline of 10% each time uh, you, you see heads and tails, okay? So here's the important takeaway is that there might be a big difference between the expected profit and the attractiveness of a certain investment. Here, the, ex profit, um, the, the expected profit maximization, which we often apply when we think about risk-neutral individuals, risk-neutral firms investing in something, ignores that there might be a big risk. And in this case, it implies an unreasonable prediction because in most cases, you are worse off by investing many times into this um, uh, in investment. So here, the takeaway from looking at the um, Bernoulli um, or St. Petersburg paradox is that expected profit maximization might yield unreasonable predictions.